Thanks for tuning into Dub World. This is video number two out of three for replacing the rear wheel bearings on a 96 Polo Harlequin. It also applies to other VWs as well. So the video that's playing now is the last clip from video number one. Wanted to make sure you didn't miss anything. We had just installed this seal into the brake drum and we're getting ready to put everything back on the car. And here's what happens when you're not paying attention and you film. Guess what I forgot to stick in there before I put the seal on? Yep, didn't put the bearing in. Now I have to take this out nice and careful and not destroy it. So important lesson, pay attention. Haha, <laughs> fortunately I was able to pry it out easily with this tool. So let's do what I should have done the first time. Get the bearing in there, clean off the back side, and then put the seal in. I tell you, if you guys don't do a YouTube channel, um, you don't realize what's involved in making videos. So when you're trying to get shots or remember to talk about certain things, maybe things that just come natural, sometimes you can forget like I did here. So one of the things you need to do is you need to make sure that the stub axle is in good shape. So you can see here, looks like it's got some rust Got some wear marks. You want to take some fine sandpaper and just get this cleaned up. And then you want to make sure that the bearing, the new bearing, actually fits over the stub axle properly. Now it's going to be in like this. So I should have done this before I greased it. You see that? It is sticking. That means there's some damage on there that needs to be fixed. That's why we had a problem getting the drum off before. So let me get to work. I actually have a Dremel tool here with a little polishing attachment. So I've been going around this and cleaning up all the rust and I've been test fitting these bearings. I don't know if you can see it, but just right about back here, that's where it's still dragging. Now this is the old bearing because it's completely free of grease. So I'm testing everything here. Once this is nice and smooth, then I'm gonna switch to the new bearings. I should have been doing this with the new bearings from the beginning before I greased them, but I didn't think about it, so. Here we are. So this, this is an issue that happens quite often, so be prepared for it. But this needs to fit over here and not be catching. You need to be able to slide it on and off. It can't be loose to the point that it's just falling off, but it needs to slide on easily. This has got a little bit of a lip right here. That's just still catching it. I'm just going to work it a little more. And then I also found that the one on the end was the same way. It was dragging too. Um, this is a lot better than it was. But I'm still going to work these a little bit more. And then your goal is you want it to, to move like this without binding. You know, this is dragging a little bit. So that's what you want to get. You want to get the bearings moving nice and freely. And then when you get to the point where you think it's pretty free, put a little bit of grease on here to lube it. Try it again. If it's nice and smooth, then you're ready to assemble. So I just thought I'd show you how the wheel, wheel bearings run in your car. So you've got your drum in here. That's the inner one. That's the outer one. You see how the taper runs. So again, you want them to be able to slide on and off nice and easy. You don't want it to drag, so nice and easy, nice and easy like that. This one still needs a little bit more. It's mostly nice, but then it's, it's still sticking around in the edge there. So my little buffing wheel was just taking way too long trying to clean this up. So what I have now here is a piece of 600 grit wet dry sandpaper that I folded in half. And what I've done is I Pulled it across like this with two hands. Very quickly, I've done like this. 
So if you can see the really shiny areas, those are the areas that are really high. So it's just taking this down. That's where the bearing is dragging, right there. I wanna show you, do you see that dull area right there? That's the area that had a lot of rust on it. And it's dull because it's still low a little bit. But doing the sandpaper, um, you wanna make sure you go all the way around and you keep it even as you're working it. But it's polishing the surface as you can tell. And it's pretty fine grit, so it's not taking off a lot. So I'm gonna show you, we're just about there. See that? It's dragging a little bit. Just like right here, a little bit. But for the most part, See how that's going on and off? Just one little spot. If I tilt it in an angle, it'll grab. But if I keep it nice and straight, this is how you want the bearing to be. You want it to smoothly glide on and off. Um, this is a good angle to see. You see that little light line right there? That's that lip that it's getting caught on. So I wanna let you know, if you've got bearings that are bad, they can damage the spindle. Obviously, if they're real bad, it can actually damage it to the point of breaking it off. So you want to definitely inspect the spindle and make sure it doesn't have a lot of damage. If it has little tiny nicks in it, things that aren't too serious, you can polish them out like I'm doing here. If you've got a lot of damage, you're going to want to replace it. You don't want to mess around with this if you've got any type of damage. Little scratches, maybe tiny gouges are okay, but anything beyond that, replace it. It's not worth your life. All right, so I test fit the new bearing and it fit fine. Keep in mind, the tolerances may be different. So that's why you definitely need to polish the spindle to the new bearing, not the old one. But I checked it, everything was fine. Got it on, about to put in the outer bearing and reassemble. Okay, so we've got our washer. It's got the little tooth, it goes on one side. And you've got your lock nut. Put that on. And again, this just goes on snug. I can't stress that enough with these. If you over tighten it, you're gonna ruin your bearing. So you just want it tight enough so that there's no wiggle. Do you see this wiggle right there? You don't want the wiggle. So you're gonna tighten it until that wiggle is gone. Can I see that? That's finger tight and there's no wiggle. So you're just gonna snug it up. Now it's gonna feel like there's some resistance because you got all the brand new grease in there. But just pull on it, make sure you don't see stuff moving around. Tighten it up. I'm gonna get the wrench, just give it a little bit of a tweak. And then I'm gonna put the little crown cap, cutter pin, and then the grease cap. And I'll also be putting some grease in here so that it can feed the outside of that wheel bearing. When you are snugging this nut, just make sure when you put the little locking crown on that the hole for the cotter pin lines up best you can so you're going to have to make sure you turn that nut to where it lines up otherwise you won't be able to put the pin in well guys here's something for you so i put this new uh, i'll call them a crown cap on here this is the new one that came with the kit and when i put that on no matter where i positioned it the grooves for the cotter pin were not lined up one side to the other. Put the original one from Volkswagen on, it fits perfect. So there we go. And that's exactly why I started this channel. I started the channel because I was tired of poor quality parts. It started out as a Facebook page and then morphed into what you see today. But whenever possible use original parts if you can the shop that i started working in back when i was a teenager 
told me to repack the bearings every 30,000 miles and replace them at 60. Get your cotter pin in and get it nice and bent over so that it stays in position. Obviously, if the nut comes loose, this is what keeps it from coming apart. Now, again, I'm gonna fill this cap with grease. Pop it on, hopefully it'll fit. If not, I'll use the old one. I was happy that the cap went on just like the original one. As you can see, it's got a little bit of denting on there from the plastic hammer, but it'll look fine once it's painted. Okay, now just spray painted the drum black. Looks a lot better than that rusty and red one. Still gotta do detailing inside here, but that's gonna have to be for another day. But looks decent for now. Okay, we're back together. If you're still hungry for more wheel bearings, check out part three where I do the other side of the car and run into some other issues. Thank you as always for tuning in and I'll see you next time on Dub World.